Hey, everybody, welcome back to Two Business Guys of Mastermind. And, you know, Rob and I have been thinking about doing this for a long time. It's where we literally take um, a like a business journal. And in our particular case, we are we have the Grand Rapids Business Journal, but it's basically things that we read. People are doing business and we look at it, put our lens on it and then ask certain kinds of questions like, hey, how would we help this company? What would we do here? This business podcast, The Two Business Guys Mastermind, uncovers for you secrets and share tips and tricks to entrepreneurship as they mastermind on how to have startup, operational, and overall business success so that you can go on to get better results. Enjoy. And we were literally just going to build out this whole thing. Rob is getting kind of busy and I'm getting kind of busy, but I <laughs> I went on and did a little something, Rob. Check this out. I just, this is something I just did for another little series I'm doing, turn what you read into cash in your pockets. And I use the business journals as, as an example. Check it out. I tell you for the money, you just can't beat the opportunities that you find in this journal. So let's take a look. So we've got a nice little article here, Nonprofit Board Diversity Lags, lags, and then it talks about two local organizations reveal how they're, they diversify their leadership. Now, as we look at this, what we're doing is we're going through and we're trying to find the problems because if you can create solutions for problems, you can make a lot of money. All right, so let's go to the next article. TikTok turns Holland into a viral sensation. Now, here is an opportunity to model something that's happening and then use it in your own business. For example, let's say we go through here and we find out, oh, okay, this is this is something close to us. It's possible. It can happen. And you happen to be a micro-influencer. Do you see what's possible here? You go and you say, well, hey, I'll do your TikToks. You bring up somebody along with you. You have them lens it and you say, I know how to do this thing. I'm really deep into TikTok. Let me do it for you. And what you see here is an article where someone else has already done it to a high level. In this particular case, it was a government, a local government to think outside the box. Social media success encourages local government to think outside the box. Check that. That becomes an opportunity for you to go, how can I apply this to my business? Okay, next article. Now, hopefully by now you're seeing the absolute gold in an opportunity from something that you already are getting or you know someone who does. Now, here's another one. Is Grand Rapids insulated from growing housing turbulence? Your job is to go through this and to find things that's happening, to ask questions of everything that's happening, what you read here, and you start getting clues. That's the big idea behind being able to do something like this, is to read something and we're going to be able to turn it into cash. Now, how we do that, it's going to come a little later. In the meantime, let's keep going. Now, Rob, you get a chance to see a what I was thinking about as yeah. I'm putting this together. Uh -huh. And that's what I had as a big idea. So anyone that's out there listening now, think about this. We have these things in front of us all the time, right? Uh, I do another series, Rob, that is um, I literally use. <laughs> there's a Women's World magazine, right? I love that magazine because it's some of the best copywriting I've ever seen. Because mm -hmm. they, they're trying to get bought, right? They're right there on the side. You're in line. You see it. And they have a headline that just hits you. So I mm -hmm. brought it in, went through it and says, look at the colors they use here. Mm -hmm. I says, now these mm -hmm. colors go well. You may not be a designer, but if you can see, oh, they use pink with green. They use red with this. They use cursive. And then they use manuscript. You get ideas that you can then use, be inspired by and use mine it for gold so i you know the series that i have is um turn what you read into you know cash in your pocket or something like that right mm -hmm. so with this one this is what i wanted us to do is go yeah. through the business journal and uh, um uh, what i'm going to do today is just kind of you know walk through a couple of things and ask you know how would we what will we do here you know mm -hmm. what would mm -hmm. we suggest to this company yeah. and it's really it's it's deal flow, right? I mean, unless you you got people that's doing that for you. In your case, you may have some people that's already doing that. 
but this is just low hanging fruit mm-hmm. as I see it. Yeah, you know, in the, yeah, in the field that we're in, if, especially for people if if you're just starting the entrepreneur kind of business business consulting or business coaching uh, space, this is definitely something that is a great idea to just get acclimated to your market. I think one of the big things for me that I would say is if I had it to all to do all over again. I wouldn't do anything different because then I wouldn't be where I am, but you get the point, right? If I had to do all over again, I would, a couple of things that I would say, if I was starting again, or if I'm starting another business, let's say, one of the big things that I would do is get an understanding of your market, your current market, whatever Mm -hmm. that is, Mm -hmm. your current local market. Mm -hmm. And the main reason why is because your current local market is easier to touch, it's easier to interact with, it's easier to get involved with and to get mm-hmm. information on the biggest thing that I, you know most of the stuff that we do right now is all over the country i've got cl- clients in new york i've got clients in las vegas i got clients in north carolina i got clients in florida and doing research about those areas is so much more difficult even though you got google even though you got the internet even though you got all the rest of that there's something different about being able to go talk to people reach out to local sources local local media and things like that and so for beginning entrepreneurs, something like a, a business journal where you're just going through and looking at what are the problems that businesses are facing, you'll know because there are people that are already talking about them in your area. So I think it's a really great idea, especially for somebody that's getting started. All right. I'm, I'm never I, I told you about this. Like I'm ne- there's two things that I'm never doing in business again. Number one. I'm never starting a business again without a team in place to do mm. a whole bunch of stuff that I ain't good at already. I will go and wait and get the people together before I start the business, right? Because I know how fast I can run when I have a team mm. versus trying to do it all myself. And 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 I'm no longer in a place where I have to convince myself that I can do it, that I can build something that I can start. Like we already, all right, check that box. Good, right? I don't got to do it no more. The second thing that I won't do again is go into a business business or into a business arena without having done the product market fit work on mm-hmm. the front end, mm-hmm. right? Done the ideal customer and the, the market research and all of that type of stuff. Like it, it makes perfect sense that if you're going to do business in an area that you do the, the return on investment analysis of how much money can I make in this area? How quickly can I make it? And how important is that first three, four months of just studying the market and getting clear on what's missing from the market. That's something that I didn't realize how important it was when I first started my business, even though I had done, you know, done businesses before, but I had done kind of, um, I had done a a franchise business. I had done network marketing businesses. So I had done businesses where that work had already been done for me. And I didn't realize how important it was. So so yeah. And some of that practice too, cannot be undervalued. Be, be unafraid, everyone be unafraid to do right along business. Y'all know what right along business is? Somebody else got the business and you're riding along. Exactly. Right. And because oftentimes what that will do is it will get you the reps. Mm -hmm. You also get a chance maybe to watch a more mature company do Mm -hmm. what they do. Now Mm -hmm. they're letting you ride along because they have determined that, uh, you know, they're, they're providing more value for whatever reason. They're Mm -hmm. providing more value to their client and at a lower cost. Y'all get it? Mm-hmm. So they split up some of the work. They give you a little bit of the money, right? right. <laughs> You're doing a majority of or some of the work. So that mm-hmm. kind of helps. So be unafraid to do ride along businesses. And now when we're talking about a little bit of deal flow here, how that works, and we're talking about how you go acquire your first uh, customers and all that kind of stuff. One of the other things, Rob, that um, that I was doing some work on this weekend, and it was, it involved it involved just kind of seeing where your com- what your competitors are doing mm-hmm. right now <laughs> i caution some people against putting too much stuff on their website because <laughs> you got nosy people like me that comes in and reverse engineers it mm-hmm. i'm looking at your keywords i'm looking at your um uh, you know your your rap your copy right uh, and i can i've got some some tools my guy that I can literally find out all the ads that you're running. Mm-hmm. Literally, right? Yeah. I mean, if you're running yeah. them, it's yeah. out there, right? <laughs> if you're running Google ads, I can I can find them. Yeah. And for and I got some free tools that I can do this with. But my point is right. this becomes the way you ramp up. But again, listen to what Rob said. Have people and systems or your who's in place. 
Mm-hmm. Right now, I'm a lone ranger. I like to do my stuff. I'm, I'm like Jay Abraham, man. You know, Jay, I'm not like you. I'm saying <laughs> in terms of being a lone ranger, I'm like you. Okay. I mean, because I like to do my own thing. I like to be up in my own head. I like to move at my own speed. Mm-hmm. Right. And I've been, you know, fighting the urge to go long range, lone ranger uh, uh, even more. But mm-hmm. I mean, you know, when you can put together a team, um, I think you could do some really good business out there with the team. Now, Rob, you tell me, how is that manded, managing of those other moving parts? And what do you encounter mm-hmm. when you have to do that? Right. So I think that's a really good question. And and and, and to that point, right, and, and, and I also want to come back and, 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 and kind of push back against the, the idea of worrying about people's taking your stuff. We'll talk about that in a second. But the first piece realize that if you're trying to grow right there's an old african proverb that says if you want to go fast go alone if you want to go far go together all right and the whole idea is you have to know what good looks like from the beginning you Mm -hmm. can get just enough money for you like i could have run my business the one that i'm running right now i could run it with just me and an assistant and most of the most of the jobs that that are necessary in the business i can do and i can make a pretty good living i can still be making six figures just myself by myself but I knew that I wasn't building a six-figure business to be just for me by me. I was building a brand. I'm building a, a foundational business for uh, seven other businesses that have to do with lifestyle and empowerment and, and, and growth and personal development. And so I'm building a 10-year plan. So I, I I needed to build that foundation and that framework and all that stuff. I know what I'm building, right? So so that wasn't successful. Me and Randy talked about this a number of times. I'm like, I could do that, but that's not success to me. That's why I'm not doing it. Right. You and have that's to know what, what success- season you're in, right? Exactly. You have to know what success is for you. And once you do, then if you're in the camp that needs to build big, that needs to build to 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 to, to grow, then you're gonna need to lead people. You need to know whether or not you have that skill set. Right. And I'm not talking about that you've managed people before because managing people is different than leading people. Right. And if you are not somebody who knows that you can get a group of people together to get them to do amazing things, if you don't have that skill set, then start learning that skill set now. That's one of the first things that you need to put into your quiver. You need to get into positions. And this is where understanding where you are in your business is important. Before I started my business, because I knew that I needed to be a better leader in 2008 2009 Mm -hmm. i went on a 10-year leadership journey now i had been a leader right i had been a coach i had been a school improvement team coordinator i was in a position where i was a leader according to the general standards of leadership but i knew what i was trying to build i knew i needed to be a way better leader in order to lead that Mm -hmm. and so i went on a 10-year journey to be a better leader right i got jobs that had leadership in them. I went to the United States mm-hmm. Marine Corps, became a Marine Corps officer to learn how to lead at the highest level. And so I came into now starting my company with all of that leadership experience. Now, I have a leadership training and development company because of that fact, because I know that's one, one of the things that's important. But what I would tell you is once you can lead people, right, and it not be an extra burden and it not be uh, extra work, that's when you can put a team together. You can assemble stuff. Otherwise, you're gonna have to learn on the job. And learning on the job is okay, but it's gonna it's it's a lot it's a, it's a lot more difficult. My clients, most of them are learning on the job. That's why they call me, and that's why they have me come help. So, I think that if you're trying to do it that way, you got to make sure that you get a leadership mentor, some sort of leadership coaching or training and development, and then you got to get your reps in. You got to get into positions where you're leading people, and you don't have to get into positions where you're leading people. In your business, you can get into positions where you're leading people in community organizations. You can get into positions where you're leading people in church. You can get in positions where you're leading people in um, – you can take a, a part-time job as a manager in some, in, in, in some effect, right? And you can start getting your reps up with leading people on other people's dollar, right, on other people's dime so that you can get that practice, right? It's a paid internship. That, bro, now you're talking the language, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you, you said something – that I want to unpack a little bit. I want to make sure you all hear this um, because as a marketer, stuff hits my ear, you know, hits my copyright inside of the, the, the brain, right? Mm-hmm. Learning leadership on the fly is hard. Mm-hmm. So imagine <clears throat> learning leadership on that, the words on one side, a picture of somebody trying to lead and it's just bad. 
right? And then that's so this is for you and your team. <laughs> uh, and then uh, and then you know, so that landing page in essence is um just one entryway into what you do, right? That's where we help. Bam, right? So you show the problem. This is something that actually you turned me on to not too long ago. I was looking at it the other day. Uh, you remember those titles on um it was a group that you were going to work with or something like uh, that, a platform. Uh, and they yeah. had these like outrageous titles, right? And I was like, you know, you know, you know 50, we find 50,000 in 50 um, minutes yeah. or something. It's like, yeah. what? Yeah. Right. Yeah. You know, I don't believe you. And, and but anyway, um, having that picture, that's one thing I picked uh, picked up from it is having a picture of bad outcome. Here, this is what mm. I want to avoid the words and then the invitation. Yeah. Right. And yep, 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 somebody yep, sees yep. that and they go, yep, that's me. Yep. They self-identify. Mm-hmm. And then you have a way by which they can get in touch with get you. Get in touch with you, right. And then they kind of, you know, and you say, yeah. well, you know, on the, on, and then look on the next page, we show examples of. So that's where I can imagine, Rob, you have mm. um, some of those micro videos. Yeah. Just enough, like little appetizers before the meal. Mm-hmm. Here's a taste. You're at Costco. I'm showing you a little taste. Do you want to buy this bacon or not? I mean, <laughs> exactly. And you go. Oh my, my gosh! This is this is this taste. Where is it? Yeah. One Another of my thing. mentors calls that creating a we portal, right? And a we portal is like a, a small Mom portal. portal. Yeah. yeah. Where yeah. only people that are supposed to be going through it can see it, can get through it, can can experience it. No, I, I agree. I think that that's and it's it's funny that we're talking about this because this is the this is the space. Randy and I were just talking off camera. We're in a space now in my business where what we're really starting to get to, we, we've got all the product market fit, all the stuff that I told y'all I would do before I got, uh, before I built another business. Yeah, we've done that now. We're, we're actually really good at it. And so now things are starting to ramp up. What, what we got marketers that are working and doing exactly that, creating landing pages, bringing people, squeezing, d- doing the whole thing so that people can get value. And um, it's it's really interesting looking at all of the things that that become available when you do it in the right sequence. Patrick Bad Davis said this in uh your next five moves, um, the book that he just that he just put mm-hmm. out a, a little while ago. He said, mm-hmm. um I gotta you know, get that book. Grandmasters in chess think 15, 20, 25 moves ahead, right? But your strategy is meaningless if you do move number 14 when you should be doing move number three. Mm-hmm. Right. And <clears throat> there's something important about the order, the, the order of the steps that you do things in that it took me a little bit to really understand the gravity of that statement and the importance of that statement. Because, you know, when you can see the whole strategy, like, all right, let's go do everything. And it's, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you can't do it that way. You got to go in order. And the reason you want to go in order is because there's certain things that you can't see until other things pop out. You can see the strategy, you know how it's supposed to happen, but, you don't see certain perils until you get mm-hmm. to certain levels, you know, and, and that's the reason why the strategy is the way that it is. That's the reason why you do it in the order that you do it, because there's certain things that pop up that you got to wait for them to pop back down. It's kind of like back in the day when you were playing, you know, Mario Brothers, right? When Mario Brothers first came out, you know, you got those plants that shoot up. And if you jump on top of them out of the pipe, then they eat you. Right. In, I never in, played in, Mario Brothers, game. so I don't know. Oh, what okay. You're talking about. All right. So, 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 so for, for all of the people that, that, that grew up in the 80s like or later, like me, now I'm just playing. Uh, so, so the basic idea is in, in, in you know, in, in maybe in Frogger was more your speed. Uh, uh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> no, I didn't play video you. games. Uh, uh, but, uh, nah, maybe a couple. Mm-mm. Ah, okay, okay. Gotcha, I just gotcha. it wasn't my thing, man. Yeah, I don't nah. have any video games in the house. I just mm, I never. That's really... why you like apps so much. You you you, you were going withdrawal while you're like not. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, but software exactly not. But the the, the 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 idea of it is there's there's certain things in 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 the games or uh you know um in certain uh rhythms. For example, have you ever you ever been at a carnival and play like whack a mole or anything like that? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So the whole concept is after a while, you start learning the rhythm and the pattern. Right. And mm-hmm. so you start being able to to anticipate, anticipate where sure. things are coming. Right. And you I, I know you were just reading this book, the Anticip- uh, anticipatory organization. Right. Yeah. The concept is the same. By doing your strategy in the right order, 
two things happen. Number one, you start to understand the pattern or the rhythm that things go in, right? And so it makes it so that you can move through faster because you understand the rhythm now. So you're not sitting in that anxiety piece. And that's the kind of idea that I think I've uh, started to realize with, with, with starting your own business, with building business, is that so many people don't understand the rhythm, like the business cycle, the mm-hmm. um Mm-hmm. The, the 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 this the, the the and how the business cycle and the economic cycle interact with one another and all of those different types of things that if you give yourself time on the front end doing paid internships getting your reps up right then what happens when you start is you get to go instead of doing stop start stop start stop start stop start stop start mm-hmm. if i look at the difference between a lot of the businesses and i and i, and I was watching this when i was starting excuse me, a lot of the people that I saw that were starting and and, and just taking off, what I noticed was they were people that either had money saved or they were coming from, you know, corporate or they were coming from from areas where they made a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And what I realized was the reason that that was the case was because they didn't have to, to, to wait out the cycles like I did where I was starting from zero and really um, trying to like, I literally built a business from zero dollars to six figures because at the time that I started my business, I had just gone off and of not making money for six months. Right, mm-hmm. I was a mortgage broker mm-hmm. for six months. I made about twelve hundred dollars. It was a horrible time in my life. I, I'm not going to relive the trauma, but the basic idea is, I had and we're living off credit cards and 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 you know I've just gotten out of Marine Corps. So you exhausted making, your runway, sir. Exhausted my runway just and now mind you, exhausted my runway after having just come off of making nearly six figures in the Marine Corps. Yeah. yeah. So it was a, yeah. a dramatic shift, right? And I noticed so I'm watching the people that are kind of poof that are that are jumping and and and, and you know going to light speed, right? And what I realized was what they had that I didn't have was they had the ability or they had the knowledge and the know-how of these cycles and things like that because they were mm-hmm. in a place where they were playing with year money instead of week money. Oh, man, that's so powerful. I was watching a, a, a MJ DeMarco, uh, the millionaire fast lane guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I was watching some of his videos and uh, they were all, you know, pretty much all doodle videos. Mm-hmm. He got a couple out now. But anyway, so he talked about that. He says, you can you can suffer some difficulty if you don't have some base money, basically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And he even says, you know, as much as he rails against, you know, the nine to five and having a job, he says that's base money. Yeah. That base money allows you the opportunity. It gives you a runway. Exactly. Uh, and and it doesn't have to be super long. Like what I tell people is like, look at your bills right now. And because for most people, most entrepreneurs starting out. If they had thirty six to fifty thousand dollars sitting in the bank. Their bills are paid for a year. Yeah. What you can get accomplished in a year when you don't got to worry about paying bills is miraculous. <laughs> right. Like, like, I don't think people get the, 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 the concept of how much work can be done, because if you find something that works just a little bit, all you got to do now is replace, replenish at the rate that you're spending. Right. Yeah. You don't even yeah. have to. So you can make $50,000 in your business, but it feels like you've made a ton of money because you now have $50,000 still in the bank for next mm-hmm. year. And mm-hmm. you know, you can make $50,000. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Like it's not a, it's not that's, a ton of runway that people have to be able to develop. And if you don't have $50,000 in the bank, right. And again, this is, you know, if you got kids and you, you, you kind of middle, like if you're young, 25, $30,000 in the bank. Right. And you can do that easily in a year if you're if you're out especially if you're young twenty five thirty thousand dollars you go and you work your job and you live off a of half of what you what you make and you put the other half in the in the bank that's it you take a year you do that now you have that money there that you know that bills are paid so now you can start doing your business stuff going to conferences doing whatever getting a getting an internship working whatever it is but you don't need none of the money that you're doing so you can put all of that back into the business you can put all of that into hiring people into going to classes into doing stuff and then into making money Mm -hmm. by the end of the year you're making money and you're replenishing at the rate that you were just spending and now life is good yeah it's that's almost like the um, DFY, right? Done for you model. And this is what I'm finding too, as I'm out there in, in my travels, um, I'm finding that 
that actually is working a lot for people. Even though you have a lot of, you know, the solopreneurs that have the DIY gene <clears throat> because they believe they have to, sometimes they just want you to do it for them. Hey, just do it for me. And then you go, well, pay me. I, I can't pay you. Exactly. Right? So um, if you can somehow bridge that gap and you can you can make a really nice book of business or get a really nice book of business on DFYing some businesses for folks, right? And this is what um, you know, getting back to like the business journal, right? As I look at mm. some of these businesses that are that are that are going and starting up, <clears throat> I personally, you know, for years would not read the business journal because I got too many ideas. <laughs> I, I literally would I would see so many opportunities for businesses to come together. All mm-hmm. kind of cool stuff, right? Mm-hmm. And I thought there's 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 just too much here. Mm-hmm. So it was it was sensory overload for me <laughs> because I'm like out of the matrix. I could see things, you know what I mean? You've got the gift of insight that took time to develop. But once you got that mm-hmm. gift of insight, then you can see the opportunities and so many things. So lately, Rob, that's just what I've been doing. It's going, okay, I'm gonna throw a video up. I'm going to put it on a lander, a landing page or in a tw- into a funnel uh, and say, OK, here, I want to show you. L- let's, let's go ahead and take this. Here's the value. Mm-hmm. Um, grab your, you know, Women's World magazine, grab whatever. I'm going to mm-hmm. show you how to monetize, you know, what you read. Right. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And and I'm just going to start literally putting those these micro funnels out there. Right. Or these what do you call them? We what we we, uh, we portals. portals. Yeah. Yeah. These we portals out there and then you know having uh i've kind of got the system in in my mind because this this plays with my style Mm -hmm, right mm -hmm. i'm not trying to build a big business right i just like a lot of money yeah right i just so some people depending on what season they're in right if you're a farmer what season are you in right then you go build that thing that that um is consistent with that season me, mm-hmm. I just love being able to take something and create from it and then show somebody how to do it. That's mm-hmm. it. Mm-hmm. Now, for showing you, pay me a couple of bucks. Mm-hmm. Go grab the automated webinar. Jump in. It's co- it's less than the cost of a movie on a Saturday. Come mm-hmm. on. Mm-hmm. Right? A mm-hmm. thousand people can pay me <clears throat> 10 bucks. Come on. Exactly. Right? Everybody come in. So that's what I love, 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 love doing. That fires me up. That inspires me. And so I just says, why swim against that tide? Mm-hmm. Right. And mm-hmm. so I'm doing that kind of stuff. And then somebody comes and says, hey, let's go build a thing. And I'm like, uh, I might try it. But, uh, <laughs> you know, like some of my uh, offline businesses. Right. And I'm yeah, like, I was about to say. Oh, man, I got to go over here and paint this, you know, this house, you know, whatever. <laughs> I got to go over here and, you know, get some, got, we got a, a place got to get ready for rent and all this kind of stuff. And I'm like, ah, and then, and then over at the uh, juice shop, it's like, oh gosh, we got employees, you know, they want more <laughs> money, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> well, you know, mm-hmm. we got supplies. Oh my gosh. You know, some supplies are over there on a ship somewhere. Ah. Mm-hmm. Right. And then yeah. I get back to my online stuff. Everyone listen to what I'm saying. Know what season you're in, what you like to do, how you like to build and run toward that. Right. Oh, yeah. I'll give you an example. I'm doing, I'm getting paid to do someone's newsletter. Mm-hmm. Now I had been wanting to get into the newsletter space. So I thought mm, I'll do theirs. Basically I'll, I would have did it for free. That's the internship part. But they said, no, let's, let's want to pay you. I said, oh, okay. And it's great. People are talking, oh my gosh, I'm getting the newsletter. And it's like, it's interesting. It's great. So I'm going, hmm, okay. All right. Right. You build up a muscle. But that's that thing that I love to do. M- build it, put it out there. People go, oh, man, what is that? Click. They go to here. Mm-hmm. Right. Mm-hmm. Put the heat map on it. See where people are going. In, and then you're done. You can move on to something else. <laughs> that's what I like. Mm-hmm. Right. And, bro, I'm telling you right now, the, the season that I'm off from teaching school until February yeah. All I'm doing is building uh 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 funnels and buy buttons <laughs> every single day. I've I already got it. three or four built. I love that's it. That's my that's my jam. Yeah. Right? No, and it, and it, it's that that's that's where if we go back if you remember at the beginning, the first thing we said is define success, right? You got to know 
what you're trying to do. If you're trying to build just stuff for you, stuff that you can do, stuff that you can manage, there's there's an entire <laughs> ecosystem that that's exactly what it is. If you look at doctors, if you look at lawyers, if you look at dentists, like small business ownership exists, right? Those are people that are like, I want to build a decent job for me that's doing stuff that I like to do every day and it pays me a, a, a decent wage. I don't want to have to deal with all the other stuff mm-hmm. that you have to deal with when you got a big business. I want to deal with just me and giving my value to the customer. And if that's what you want, great. Randy's model works. Like don't don't sleep on what he's like he just dropped a whole bunch of gems right you got it you got it and, and we caught we talk about it right you you got the hunter gatherer phase where you got to always go hunt and kill what you eat and then we we, we talk about this every week hunter gatherer <laughs> right right trapper, and, then, and then you get to the farmer. point where when you're a single part when you're a single yeah. single entity you learn how to trap and once you've learned how to trap you can put out as many traps as you want here's the interesting thing in the same time that it takes you to go hunt and kill one meal you can put out a ton of traps yeah. And just check those traps yeah. and you'll find meals that yeah. pop up whenever you it's need fun. them. It's so much fun, man. And the only thing that I can see because I'm on such a tear right now is eventually I'll get like a chief of staff, right? Someone that's managing all that. Mm-hmm. Someone that's all, and I'll pay them to, you know, make sure that a trap went off and somebody didn't come in and take my my bounty mm-hmm. because I let the food spoil. Right. So that'll that'll be something that as you set things, depending on how you like to move, everyone, mm-hmm. how you like to move is uh, is um, going to be dependent on how what kind of business you start. So there we go. Uh, and or how you're running the current business. Just be honest with yourself. Be honest with yourself and say and know when to say, I do not like doing X. Exactly. So I'm going to hire to X. Exactly. Let me get somebody that's fired up and wants to right. like figure some stuff out on maybe our dime or whatever. Right. And then depending on, and th- that's where the transition a lot of times happens for people, which is like, for example, I love doing what I do in my business. And Rob, but is me doing it. it <laughs> Why? Thank you, brother. I appreciate it. But me doing it doesn't allow for me doing it at the level that most of the market needs. It doesn't allow for, time enough for me to do all the other things that I want. So this is a, for me, it's a, it's a time leveraging play. Now I can still do the stuff that I need to do at the highest level and get paid up here, but it, Mm -hmm. but I'm run. I want, I want to run a business. I want to bring people in to train them, to help them learn, to help, right. I want my business to be a conduit where people come in and they come out better and they go do bigger and better things. That's part of what I'm building. Right. So I know that for my vision for what I'm trying to do, there's a, there's a ton of components other than just, an economic component. That's the reason why I'm building a big business. You don't have to want all that. That doesn't have to be your dream. Like there's no shame in that. Like I love Randy's dream, right? Eventually I'm going to be at the place where Randy is. I'm not there right now. I'm see, in the process see, of building my thing. Did y'all hear what he just said? And it's beautiful, right? It's beautiful when you can hear exactly what you want. And this is what you, as you talk more about, um, if, if Rob and I were in a room, we would we would ask you like nine whys, right? Mm. Not five, nine. <laughs> Why you want to do that? Why we get to the root of what you really want, right? Mm. Rob said, "I want to build a business." Right? Think about the name, leadership, le- le- leadership legacy, leadership, legacy consulting group. Yeah, group. What's at the end? Group. Mine, mm. our bridge business institute. <laughs> Exactly. Right? I mean, exactly. so you think think about how uh what you, and, and now for you, think about how what you naturally find yourself doing and saying and talking about how you want to build something, right? How you want it to interact with your life. What do you want it for? I literally start doing something different, Rob. So listen to what we're saying and don't take it as brags, but as blueprints for you all. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Is I literally start asking people. I used to ask them what kind of money, what kind of income would you like? That's how I would start off our consulting um, opportunity. Mm-hmm. Now I say, what kind of impact would you like to have or income you would like to make? There you go. I just right. cover two, you know, yeah. opportunities. Right. I, well, I want to, I want to do this. I want to impact the world. I want to you right. know, change. Cause money. they're normally intertwined. Most people, for most people, and they, you know, they've done studies about this, like above $75,000 happiness index doesn't go up very much 
per fi per five thousand dollars that you increase. Whereas up to seventy five thousand dollars, there's a dramatic increase. So you go from thirty thirty five thousand dollars, there's a dramatic happiness increase. For thirty five to forty thousand dollars, dramatic happiness increase, right? And the the key thing about it is, and for those of you all out there that are in the that, that are in the kind of beginner business world, you're you're trying to figure this out, trying to figure out how to make money, right? We like to call, uh, we we like to talk about like our side hustle phase of our businesses, right? In that space, it's okay that if you're in that space and you're like, I just want to be able to prove that I can make extra money so that I don't have to have a job. Or, like there's different yeah. phases of this journey, right? And mind you, before I built this business, I had built three other businesses, right? I had done the figuring out I can make money outside of a job thing for 10 years before I started, really 15 years before I started this business. So don't don't hear everything that we're talking about once you get to the I'm done with the nine to five world and think that you just you just show up there and you just decide that you want to be there. There's some stuff exactly. you got to figure out. You got to figure yeah. out. Can you make money more than just the job that you have or just a couple of jobs that you have? Can you make money getting people to buy from you for something, anything right? Selling somebody else's stuff. What do you have that hustle ability? There's a lot of that stuff that you got to figure out as you're going on this journey. It and what a wonderful journey, Rob. Oh, right. Yeah. And I think back um, because I've been doing a lot of gratitude work and just, you know, just just being grateful for, you know, um, where I've been delivered. Right. And you start thinking, I, I worked a job, some hard jobs at time and bought real estate. Mm -hmm. Right. Because I thought I'm not waiting for somebody else to give me a retirement. I make my own. Mm -hmm. Right. And then leverage it multiple multiple ways right when you need a uh, tax shelter um because real estate allows that and then when you need it to feed you um you know you have that as an opportunity because if you get them paid off all these all these different things right and then mm -hmm. skill building i can mm -hmm. i can lay some drywall mm -hmm. i can run some electrical mm -hmm. and then i i just recall thinking back when i was building this my sons Right. I, they were working in the business with me. One of them I'm still wondering about, like, did you learn anything? <laughs> right. But then another one calls me up and says, hey, you know, um, I was doing something with some drywall. And then I started thinking about when we had the houses and I would help you with it. That's you see, that's you build that kind of life for yourself. Mm -hmm. And then one day you package them up and you play the bank. Mm -hmm. That's how I said, that's, you know, that's your exit. And you're saying, well, you know, I'm chilling for three or four years because I'm the bank. Now, you know, and you keep digging into the pile and you kind of look at the pile and say, oh, the pile's getting kind of low. <laughs> right. And then you get into a different space. Now, it's, for me, it's digital real estate. What mm -hmm. can I create, create, create online, set it, forget it, check in on it or have a chief of staff check in on it. It's still the same concept. So you build something once and now you can eat on it forever. Right. Mm -hmm. Whereas. You may look at it and says, I want to run things. I want to be in charge. I want to lead. I want to create legacy. And you do that. Y'all seeing it? We hope you're seeing it. We hope you're inspired today. This is what this, mm -hmm. is what this conversation was about. Take a look at some of the stuff that we're doing. Here's some opportunity for you to take a, a journal, a paper, and turn it into something. Mm -hmm. Right. Listen to how Rob's building his business. He said, I'm putting people in place. I've got my four corners. I got my four walls. We're getting ready to pour the concrete. Bam. Mm -hmm. If you notice that on a house, once the concrete's uh, poured, once the foundation poured, that thing goes up like crazy. Yeah. Same thing. Yeah. Same thing. Well, I'm saying, hey, look, build mine in a house uh, or in a, in a build my walls in the factory. Right. I'll just go put a slab down and you can <laughs> drive the thing in, build it in a day and get out of here. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but it's still a house. That's what we hope to inspire you and give to you today. We want you to go out there and be successful. The two business guys just wanted to mastermind on that today. And 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 hey, we hope we've done something for you today. If we have. Send this to your friends. Subscribe. There you go. Like, if subscribe and share. Yeah, you see, I don't like to ask that until the end because mm -hmm. I say, has this gotten you value? Can you s almost mm, smell the little foldy things that go in your pockets, right? <laughs> and then if you do, if you can, then subscribe, send it to a friend that says you got to listen to these dudes. Mm -hmm. That's all. That's it, Rob. That's all I have for awesome, today, awesome, man. What awesome. you got? Uh, you great think? talk. Great talk. I think that, yeah, just to, just to, to, to finish up, no what success looks like for you.
And if you don't know that yet, really get to the to bedrock, to the foundation, to the root of what you're trying to accomplish and over what time period you're trying to accomplish it. Because the how will show up once you know where you're trying to go. Boy, does it ever. Okay, y'all, get after it.